Hey, welcome back. In this week's video, we are gonna dive into the power of CSS variables. Because I remember it vividly, the time when I was still working with jQuery, and yes, I am that old, things used to be just a little bit harder. And when we were rebuilding uh, the amazing Code Sandbox website that we did last week, I saw that they had this gradient in the website that will follow your cursor when you move it around. So when building that last week, I was thinking, man, nowadays it has become so easy to build something like this. Whereas before in the jQuery era, you had to, for example, duplicate styles. Like I found this old code pen that does kinda the same thing. Um, and what you see is when using jQuery, what you usually did is you define something in the CSS file as the base gradient. And then when moving the mouse around, you had to redefine this CSS property again and take in everything like the type of gradient, but also the colors. So you kind of had your styles in two places. And you can imagine that was horrible to maintain. But luckily we are way past that era and currently we have something called CSS variables or CSS custom properties. And in today's video, I want to show you how you can replicate something like this with fairly little JavaScript and CSS and also no duplicate CSS. So at the end of the video, I will also implement this in the code sandbox page we built last week. But to start, I want to show you this very basic page that's only the gradient and has some plain CSS to really show you how this works instead of doing it in Tailwind. What you can see here on the right side is a diff where we have this hero as well as a paragraph that's the title. Then there is some CSS here. This could be anything. It could also be style components, SAS or anything like that. I decided to use some basic CSS in this page just for the sake of this demo. What you see here is that the hero is the height of the screen as well as the width of the screen and that has a gradient in the background and it does some flexbox to position the text but the most important thing is this gradient. And right now what I've done is I positioned this gradient at the top left position of 100 pixels and 100 pixels so it's somewhere around here I think. So if we for example change this to 500 you see that the gradient moves to the right. And this is what we can use to move the gradient around. And that was also what we were using back in the days when using jQuery. But now we have the CSS custom properties. The first thing we still need to do though is get the mouse position. That hasn't changed. So we can get the mouse position by adding a new use effect. Then we're gonna create a function that says update mouse position. That is a function that takes in the mouse event in a second. Then we're going to add an event listener to mouse move. And that mouse move event will then call this function that we will fill in in a second. Because we're using a use effect, we also need to return a cleanup function to remove the event listener, like Copilot is already suggesting, to clean up this event listener if this effect would rerun at a certain time. So this event object gives us two properties, or it gives us a lot, but there's two we're interested in. And we can destructure them from the event object. Both of them are called client X and client Y. And if we console.log them, we already see that we get the mouse position based on the current window. Now what we want to do is we want to have these values and put them actually as the X and Y position of this gradient. And that way it will exactly follow our mouse and go to the far right edge if our cursor is also there. So we could set some inline styles like in a jQuery time where we would repeat this CSS gradient, or we could even decide to not render it here and only do it in JavaScript, but then you would have no gradient when the page loads. So how are we gonna get these values into the CSS down here? That is where the CSS variables come into play. CSS variables or custom properties are actually simply properties of your current CSS element. And this property can then be used in any place in your CSS. So the usage of it would look something like var minus minus x if we would create a variable called x. And we can define these by setting this variable or custom property on any element in the page. 
You can do it on your HTML node, also called the root element, or on any div. And as soon as you do that, any child element or the element itself on which you define it is able to use that variable. So that means that if we would define it on our hero component, we can use it in the CSS like so. So let's also add in the Y coordinate already, and then let's see how we can add this property. Actually, it's pretty straightforward. The only thing we still need to have is some reference to the element of our hero. And in React for that, we can use a ref. So we can create a const hero ref is use ref that by default is null and otherwise for TypeScript is an HTML div element. That ref is imported from React and then we can put this ref on our hero. And now we did that, we can use this ref in our use effect to update a certain style. Let's first check if there is a hero ref or not. If not, we return. This can happen during the initial render. If something is not in the DOM yet, you won't have a reference to the element. So then there's nothing you can update yet. And then there's pretty much only one thing left to do. And that is taking this hero ref and then running style.set property where you set the X as client X. And don't forget to add in the unit as well. And then we do exactly the same for the Y where we take the Y, set that as client Y. And then magically you see that a gradient appeared. And what happens is if I move the cursor around that value, you can see down here as well, is still updated and is then reflected into the element itself. So if we remove this console.log and we quickly go to the elements tab, you can also see how this works. It is setting this value, the X and Y as an inline style. That's what the set property does on the style object. But then this value is being used within the gradient. The only thing is if you now load the page, it's black. And the reason for that is because again, you still need to run some JavaScript in order for the gradient to appear. But there's one thing you can add for that and that's the default value. So in this var function, you can add a comma and then a second value, for example, 100 pixels like we used to have before. If we then refresh the page, we see that that 100 pixels is used as the default value. And as soon as you move your cursor, JavaScript takes over and the inline style is more important than the default style. And then it uses that for the gradient again. So with this little bit of JavaScript, we can already make this interactive part. And also as soon as you, for example, are gonna use a transform where you only want to update the X position, for example, that would also be horrible back in the days before we had CSS variables. Because let's say, for example, and bear with me, this is going to get really ugly. Let's say you had a transform and then a rotate of 10 degrees and uh, translate X of minus 10 pixels. Let's say you want to animate this translate X based on this X variable. Before, if you wanted to do that with JavaScript, you also had to repeat the rotate because if in JavaScript you would only overwrite the translate X, that would override the transform property, meaning it would lose the rotate. However, by now using the CSS variable to replace a small piece of this property, we can now change the translate X without needing to duplicate the rotate in our JavaScript as well. So what we can, for example, do is we can add in a calc in here and then add in the variable of minus X. And again, we can use that variable because it's set on the parent of our title in this case. And if we would then divide that X position by 10, you see that now also the title moves based on this X value and thus based on your cursor. Without needing to add any extra JavaScript or something like that, we can simply manipulate this with CSS now by only setting this XY position on your page. And in my opinion, there are so many of these super nice use cases where you can use CSS variables to make your page interactive without adding a lot of complicated JavaScript overhead, duplicate styles, added maintenance and things like that. So satisfying. And that leaves me with one thing. How can we also implement this in Tailwind? 
So for that, let's go back to our hero component and also go back to the homepage of the Code Sandbox page. If we go back to our hero component, we find a section and this section has a class name that actually renders this gradient. And this gradient right now has a fixed position. So there's not that much we need to do to make this work in Tailwind as well. So first let's start with copying in this use effect and then make sure that we also import use effect here. And we are gonna use the target ref instead of the hero ref because that target ref is already a ref on the section. So by adding in this effect, we are now setting the X and Y variable on this section component. So if we already inspect that element, we see that it's already defined. And if we move our cursor, it gets updated. So the only thing we need to do is reflect this in our Tailwind class. And because we are already using an arbitrary value with the square brackets, we can simply change this class to not use a fixed value, but use var minus minus x and var minus minus y. And by doing that, we again see that it already moves and follows the cursor. The only thing we should not forget is also here at this default value. And remember, if you want to add a space in your Tailwind just for readability, you need to add underscores. And if we do that, everything works. And also if we refresh, we see that we have a default gradient in the top left. And as soon as we start moving, it starts following the cursor. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you agree with me that CSS variables are super useful and that you can do so many great things with them and perhaps even with little effort. Like always, I link the source in the description again. This will be added to the Code Sandbox repository and it will also be a second page called Gradients Added and that page will contain only the gradients. So you can quickly have a look at that and perhaps copy it and use it in your own projects. Next to that, also check the link down below to my Discord because I would love to see you there and I would love to help you with these great tips and tricks to also make your own projects even better. Again, thank you so much for watching. Absolutely leave a like and subscribe down below. I really appreciate that and I hope to see you in the next one.